Hey guys, Tyler here. Welcome back to Temetsi, the most creative and challenging Minesweeper game I've played. We are on level 26. It's a nice spade. I won't be doing every level, but I'm sure I'll do this one. It is a multicolored spade. There are 36 mines in total, 12 mines on blue, 9 mines on yellow, and 15 on red. Alright, well let's get started. I see some ones that I can mark up. I changed the quality of life feature so that cells that are fully complete get grayed out. And it looks like you do have to complete all of them, not just find all the mines. And I thought that would improve the viewer experience. Just to keep track of numbers and things I'm calling out. It doesn't make the game at all easier for me, which I wasn't entirely sure if that would be the case before doing it. But now I know for sure the game is just as difficult as it was before. But now I can probably make call-outs a little bit more easily. You know, there was some easy Minesweeper rules I could talk over. Oh, there's one down here. Forcing a mine. Is that all now? I think it's finally time to do some logic. Okay, so there's one, two, one up here. Uh, the one means one of these two octagons must be a mine. And this one means one of these two octagons must be a mine. So the squares, okay, that freed up a lot, must be non-mines. And that does allow me to complete some other stuff. What about 3-1 uh, up here? One of these two is a mine, and one of these four are mine, so these two are not mines. If one of these two are- actually, I can complete this two, there we go. If one of these are a mine due to the one, neither of these are a mine due to the two, we can get some moving there. One of these four are a mine next to the three? And three of the four are mines next to the four, so these two are mines, and these two are not mines, and I have a one I can complete. Well, if one of these two are a mine, then this is not a mine, and I can force a mine with a one. This three means one of these two are a mine. Not helpful. Well, if one of these two are a mine, octagon-wise, this is not a mine. Three forces two mines, I can complete a bunch. Okay, that does give me some easy Minesweeper completions. No heavy logic there. The two and the one together mean one of these two is a mine, and this always is a mine for the second mine basic minesweeper completion with the one i have a three that's complete i do have a one that's complete this three oh no this three forces a mine to be right here i think this three forces a mine right here this three so one of these three are a mine one of these three are a mine and this four says that three out of these four are mines let me make sure i got my counting right it's one out of these three and three out of these four so yeah these two are always mine and this is not a mine so leaving one out of two of these being mine. This three forces a mine here. This three has one, two, and then the third mine is here. And I can complete going up. Very good. The three in the middle is not, or it is complete. The two is complete. Can I do something with this four now? Two out of these three are mines. And I said earlier that one out of these three are mines. So this is not a mine and this is. One out of these two are mines. This three means that one of these two are mines. Well, this one means one of these two are mines, and this four means one of these three are mines, so this is not a mine, and this is also not a mine, and I can complete that. The three is complete, and I can mark a mine here. A little bit left to go. There's one mine left in the red, and I know it has to be next to the one, so I'll mark off anything that isn't next to the one, completing the red. There are two mines left in the yellow I think I can work with. One of them's next to the three, and the other is next to the two, so I should be able to mark off everything that isn't next to them and is also yellow. Um, and in the meantime, I have a two that is completed, a one that forces a mine. There's two mines left in the blue. Can I just do that now? Yeah, there's two mines left in the blue. One's next to the three, and one's next to this one up here. Actually, even better, one's next to this two. So everything that isn't next to those two numbers is a mine. I have a one that forces a mine here, and two, and then all the blues are complete. And there's one mine remaining, so I believe that I have one, two, and then this will make the third mine next to the three, and that is complete. Ahem. There we go. <laughs> a wonderful spade and a good puzzle st to start off the day. What is this puzzle? <laughs> uh, what a cool looking setup. There are 27 mines in total, 15 in purple, 4 in light blue, 5 in this checkerboard pattern orange in the middle. And there are diagonal adjacencies. So I know that one of these two is going to be a mine due to the one, and the other one says that these two are not mines. One of these three are mines, so these two are not mines. This five should be telling, because if one of these two is a mine, then all four of these have to be a mine to add up to the five, and I have a one that's complete. I have a one, two, which means that the mine unique to the two, or the square unique to a two, 
is a mine. I have a one that's complete. Another one that's complete. I have a four, which means one of these two is a mine. And this two means two out of these three are mine. So this is a mine. I have a one, which has only one potential spot for a mine. God, this is weird. I think the orange I can deal with. One of these two is a mine and one of these two are mine. So everything that's not adjacent to one of those two ones is not a mine. If one of these two is a mine, then all three of these are non-mines. I do have a 2-1 pattern here. So the 2-1 pattern, I, I think I'm going to refer to this in the future, is that when a 2 and 1 are next to each other on a square-based minesweeper puzzle with uh, diagonal adjacencies, you will always find that the mine that is unique to the 2, or the square that's unique to the 2, will always be a mine, and the squares that are unique to the 1 will always be non-mines. Now, it has to be when they're orthogonally adjacent to each other like this, but there's other weird cases where it doesn't have to be oriented like this, but you can still apply the same logic. So that allowed me to free up a ton. What else did it do? It gave me this one, which is complete. I have this four one next to each other, which is just an advanced two one, because all three of these have to be mines, and then the square unique to the one has to be not a mine. I guess I didn't explain why. Uh, we can go back to the actual 2-1 near the top to explain why. You have to think about where the mines next to the 2 have to be. If both the mines were shared by the 2 and the 1, the 1 would be overworked. So the only way to not have that is to be guaranteed to have a mine that is unique to the 2. Then we have a scenario where there is one mine left with the 2 and one mine left with the 1. So the mine is going to be in one of the squares that they share, so the mine that is unique to the original one, well, the squares that are unique to the original one are not going to be a mine. I hope that clears things up, at least partially, because I'm going to be referring to 2-1 logic a lot more. I have a 1 that's complete. Well, one of the, out of these three is a mine. That's not helpful. How about instead I do a little 2-1 logic up here? I have a 2-1 orthogonally adjacent to each other, so the cell unique to the 2 is a mine, and the cell unique to the 1 is not a mine. This 3... This is one of those situations where this is a this is a 2-1 that has an abnormal appearance. So we have this 3 here, which will be our makeshift 2 because it already has a mine next to each other. And we have this 2 here, which is a makeshift 1 because it already has a mine next to it. We cannot have two mines in the cells that are shared by both of them. So one of them has to be in the cell that's unique to our 2. And because one of these three is a mine, we cannot have a mine in the cell that's unique to the one so this is not a mine and then i can complete some basic minesweeper logic here well i do have bottom right completed i had some basic minesweeper logic i have well i've completed two now so that's got to count for something and some more basic minesweeper logic can get me through this i have a two that's completed i have a three which forces two mines and a one that's completed and now i'm completed with the orange i believe my two and three are completed so the whole right side is done there is one mine left in the light blue, and it has to be next to this two. So these two light blues are not mines. I have a two I can complete, and another two I can complete. One of these two is a mine, and two out of these three are mine, so this is a mine. And I have my two completed now. I have a one completed with a question mark. Thanks, asshole. I can count the purples. Three purples left. One of these two is a purple. And then two out of the three next to the... Well, the two and three, basically, are mines. So everything not adjacent to those numbers and purple are non-mines. So, this three I can complete. One of these two is a mine, so one of these two is a mine. And I have a total of one non-purple mine. So if the one non-purple mine is here or here, then every, excuse me, everything else non-purple is not a mine. And that should allow me to clean it up. This will be the mine due to the one, two. And this logic should clean up quite nicely. That was a cool puzzle. It was great. <laughs> Just notice the name. Oh my big square. It is a 5x5 five five giant square. And then we have some 3x3s three three and 2x2 two two squares, of course, just to mix it up. So there are 34 mines in total, no mines in the light blue. Let me just mark those up. And that just frees up the entire board, basically. And there are 9 mines in the only blue remaining. And there are no diagonal adjacencies, which should give me a good start. Looks like there's a lot of good gimmies in the center. Another good one, a two. That's a gimme, excuse me. This one's a gimme, this one's a gimme. It seems like a lot of the small cells will just create gimmies due to the no diagonal adjacencies. Are there any others? Yeah, I have a gimme over here. Gimme in the top left. And I think I'm out of gimmies. 
I think I can do something with this 161 combination because one of these two has to be a mine. And then I think I need to have all four of these be a mine just so one of these two, two can be a mine. And that's the only way to satisfy the six. So what I know is these four have to be mines. One of these two is a mine, meaning all the ones adjacent to the big one otherwise are non-mines. And that can help me out a little bit because I have a small two I can complete. And then this one is not going to be a mine. And then some other small ones that I can complete quite cleanly. What the hell? Which of these do I have to work with? Well, maybe I can work with this four, six, and one somehow. Or maybe just the four. Maybe the four and five together. Two out of these three will be mines. Can it be these two? We could have two mines here and then one mine here. Wait, no, I would have to have two mines here and one mine here. Because I know that this four has to have at least one of the blues be mines. And at least one has to be next to the four. And then I think this seven needs to have at least one next to it as well. Because if I filled in all of the non blues next to the seven, this four, and this four, there would still have to be one remaining in each of them to complete it. So each of them will have their own blue next to them. So the three blues have to be one next to this four, one next to this seven, and one next to this four. Meaning that all other ones not orthogonally adjacent to those three, including this diagonal, is a non-mine. And I think that does help out a ton. Well, that's gotta do something, surely. It gives me some more gimmies at least. One of these two is a mine. I have this as a gimme. Well, one of these two has to be a mine. Which means that these two are not mines, and that should clear things up, and the four gets completed right here. And now there's one mine left in the blue. Well, how's my five doing? I have one, two, three, four, five adjacent. So this one is not a mine, and this one is. And this four right here has one, two, three, so this one is also a mine. I can complete the one. There we go. Eight mines to go. How about the seven? I have one, two, three... So there are four cells left, and all of them have to be a mine to make the seven, allowing me to complete the three down below and get that miniature one. There are three mines to go, and I think that one of them is next to the big three, one is next to the big four, and one is next to the other big four. So everything not orthogonally adjacent can be gotten rid of. And if one of these two is a mine, that means neither of these are mines. And we can mark that. And it's just one of these two, so I can get rid of the rest. And there we go. What? Oh. <laughs> Good puzzle. Holy sh... <laughs> the ultimate... It's called overstimulation. And that would be correct. 1x1s, 2x2s, 4x4s, and 8x8 eight eight squares. 15 mines total. One in the big squares. One in the not-so-big squares. Six... Or sorry, one in the even smaller squares. And six in the smallest squares of color. And then that does add up to be six mines in the gray squares. And there's no diagonal adjacency. So I can start from the bottom left. And that would be with two mines next to the two. So one of these oranges has to be a mine. So that makes up for all of the mines with the oranges. So all other oranges are non mines. That's our start. And I do have some top right ones I can complete. And I also have some more top right ones I can complete. I have a medium two that's complete and that pink is taken care of it's a four i don't know if i can work with that right now i know i have a three one in the middle i can work with no the three one that's not a real three one i forgot that the big cells are something oh boy that almost messed me up oh that is tough i do know that one of the pinks are a mine and one of the purples are a mine at most gosh i'm, I'm not sure well i do know this if the bottom right big purple were a mine, sorry, if it were not a mine, this big purple would be a mine. So then all of these would be marked as non-mines. Hold on, let, let, me, let me get this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to whip out. I, I want to want to show you guys this train of thought. I don't want you to lose me. This game has a pencil marking tool. See this little brush here? I can make it whatever color I want. I think I'll choose, actually black is probably a good color. It's not possible for me to like click a mine here. So we have pencil marking. If this is a mine, then I'll have mines marked with X's and non-mines with O's. Actually, let's do it the other way around. If this were a mine, this would not be a mine. And neither would any of these. You know, maybe dots, right? 
This would then have to be a mine, and then so would both of these. So this would complete everything that isn't gray and orange, basically. So no mine, no mine, no mine, no mine, no mine, no mine. And the issue with that is because this would not be a mine, then the only other mine next to the four would have to be this one, and then the four would have three, which is bad. So this cannot be the mine, which means the other purple has to be the mine. So let's mark it. And just to show them right, I should click it. Let's go. The logic is complete. This one is a, well, complete. I can go through that. The two forces, two mines, and they're both in lime green. So we're out of lime greens. Goodbye to the rest of them. Part of me was nervous, not gonna lie. I have another one that's complete. I have a one that forces a mine here. Some other numbers that are complete. So let's see, one pink, one orange, and three grays are left. I wonder if I have to do a similar type of logic from before. Like, I think I have to bring out the pencil again, just to show you guys. Let me just, yeah, make sure. So if this were a mine, these two would not be mines. And then the only other mine next to the three would be here, which we know already is not a mine. This three would just be screwed. So this just can't be a mine. There's no way. There's no way. And the other one, pink one has to be a mine. Again, I have three gray mines. <laughs> Am I going to have to bring out the pencil once again? Because I think I see how if this were a mine, none of these could be mines. And then this too would be unhappy. Wait, this could be a mine. I, uh, misdrew. If this were a mine, none of these would be mines. Or this. And the two could still be happy. And then it would look something like this. Did I really just kind of somewhat brute force the whole thing? I mean, I could check to make sure there's no inconsistencies, but I think this all lines up pretty nicely. Maybe I should like dis try to disprove the opposite just to see. Like if this were a mine, this couldn't be a mine. And then neither of these could be mines. And then this two would be unhappy. Yeah, okay. That's the, that's the proof. Just swap off of this. So this, ooh, <laughs> this is a mine and this is not. And then we can go down the line, take care of the rest. And you know the drill. <laughs> Just look at my little cheat sheet. Because to be honest, I didn't want to think about it. Uh, that was a cool puzzle. Hot damn. We got the pencil marking strategy down. I, I do think I could do it all in my head, but I have to make this a good viewing experience. You know, two viewer experience things have been added this episode. The pencil marking and the graying out of the numbers. Hope you guys appreciate it. And these puzzles have just been getting better and better. I like the variety. I like how it's just coming to be. I'm excited to see what the late 30s and 40s hold. I'll see you all in the next episode with exactly that. Have a wonderful day. Peace.